sixth graders in Marguerite Ames' class are using the most powerful activity there is for developing historical empathy, role playing. In this case, they take on personalities from the American Revolution. The students view events from the point of view of their characters and keep personal diaries of how the events of the revolution affect them. They not only learn about different perspectives due to gender, ethnicity, and social class, but also due to geography, differences that can be transferred to their own lives in the 21st century. I think my idea about social studies is from Mark Twain, who said, uh, history doesn't repeat itself, at best it sometimes rhymes. And I think our job um, as social studies teachers is to help kids make the connections between something that happened in the past and something that's happening now. And in order to understand all the issues of today in our society, you have, if you look back and you see what's happened before, it gives you a better sense and a better perspective. What happened on well, one of the things to see how our government was formed and the ideas um, that made its formation, uh, as some people would say, necessary and possible, and to also see whether the, the ideals that our country began with, whether they're still being carried out today. The people who settled in Virginia were very different from the people who settled in Plymouth and their, the reason why they settled was different. They came from a different part of England. Um, they spoke differently. Their ways were different. Their traditions were different. And so um, to understand that and to understand that um, in the beginning, the United States were actually really discrete units and that the idea of their um, being one nation was a very foreign idea. When the students came to this particular piece, which is the road to revolution, they were able to put themselves into their colonial people with some background. So they understood the way people dressed. They understood the way they thought about certain things, how they ate, what the technology was already. So in their diaries, in which they uh, express their opinion on various events that happened, they're able to convey also the way people lived and to give it some um, authenticity and atmosphere as well as authenticity and voice. The characters are people who could really exist and there's a great variety of them. There are slaves, there are free blacks, there are rich and poor and recent immigrants and you know, old Virginia families. You have a whole lot of uh, a variety there. Uh, I'm Landslider Pettyjohn, and I'm a slave in Virginia, and uh, I'm trying to make the decision who I should fight for, and I think I'm going for the Americans. <laughs> I'm not quite sure yet. I'm uh, Charles Frazier, um, and I'm a small landowner, and uh, I was undecided until I was, I was in the western part of the Appalachians and when the law passed that I had to move towards the east, that's when I started getting mad about like what the king was doing. So that's when I started leaning over towards the patriot side. You pretend that you're the person that you have been assigned and you write a diary entry from their point of view for every event that we learn about. And I think that helps kind of get it set in your head. How are the British proceeding down the road? How are they going down that road? They were in their formation. They were in their formation. Um, were the colonials in their formation? No. no. What kind of, what technique, what do we call that kind of warfare that they were engaging in now, today? Yes. They were like ambushing them. They were ambushing them. And they, the British weren't used to that, so they, they just like kept walking and just getting basically shot off. Um, right. Um, and where had they learned? Where had the colonials learned that? From the Indians. From the Indians during the French and Indian War. I live in Virginia and I'm a patriot, mm -hmm. but my husband was killed in the French and Indian War. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that maybe I I wouldn't like the way that they were fighting because the Indians probably killed my husband like that. It's actually. Uh, fun just having one character to deal with because it sort of helps you to think of what it was like back uh, when those acts were happening. The idea is that they know generally when it happened, 
um, generally the sequence of events, but they understand the ideas because those are the more important things. We have um, two points of view, one from the Salem Gazette in Massachusetts and one from the London Gazette um, about how it started. And I just want to remind you, um, as we found out when we looked at the Boston Massacre, how many different opinions people had about what actually happened. So you as a colonist need to come up with your own idea. And you need to come up with, as your, your opinion at the end, um, how do you feel about it? And that could mean, how is it going to change your life? Some people think that, oh yeah, this and this should have happened. And some people say, oh no, this was outrageously terrible. It shouldn't have happened. The students hear the real voices. They hear what people had to say, the person who was at Lexington, the person who was making his way back from Concord to Boston, the soldier, um, the various um, people who testified at the Boston Massacre. You hear their words, you hear uh, the diversity of opinions, and even though um, they know that they were in the same time and place, they, how different it can be. And uh, I think that's really important. If you only give one opinion or you give a um, a secondary source, then there's no, there's no room for, for, for analysis, really. Sometimes the primary sources are really difficult to read, so they have to be edited. And, uh, you know, I'll try to, you know, pick out the most salient po points, leave the, um, the 18th century language as much as I can. Sometimes they'll, they'll um, work in groups, and they'll, so they'll be all reading it together and analyzing it, and going, and going around to them and asking, well, what do you think? What do you think this really means? What does it mean to you? And always taking it back to their character. What does it mean to you as a colonist? Everybody kind of just like listens to other people's point of view, and then different people kind of get their own idea of what they think happened and how it affects them when they're interpreting it through their um, character, uh, it's the same as any historian when they have a primary source, they're interpreting it too. And why would this person's interpretation be any better than this person's interpretation? My name's Janet Murray, and my parents were killed in a war, and so I'm a patriot and I hate the British. Being able to connect with the character and internalizing the events of the revolution passionately, and that's, that's what I want. I just really oh, hate the British. Yes. They get so you know, irate and just disgusted with things, and, and that sort of, um, reaction is what you really want, because then they're feeling, it's, it's genuine, it's authentic reaction to, to history. I really like doing the diaries, because well, I like writing a lot, and then you get to kind of practice writing and learn about the revolution. Also, we worked on figuring out what the real equivalency is in currency of the time, so that the kids were, were able to see. If I have to pay a tax on my liquor license, I could either do that, but just the tax on the liquor license, or I could, you know, buy an oxen. As of upcoming November first, everyone in the colonies will be taxed on all documents printed on paper. For example, if I had not gotten the paper on the land transferred before the Stamp Act is effective, the tax on the documents would be as much as I earn from making two ladies riding suits. That's you know, money talks, and they can, kids at this age could really, are really aware of money and what it buys and um, how much they have and how much they don't have. So having that component in the, the journal writing, they could really feel the pinch, shall we say. I, I am glad to be a colonist and from England, and I could, and I'm proud, but I am afraid of the king because of the Jacobite Rebellion and because he they destroyed my house in Scotland. One of the things about middle school kids is that they like to make their own opinions. They always have their own opinions about things. And in order to validate those opinions, you give them the opportunity to make them. You give them the material so they can come up with reasonable and accurate ones in terms of, um, you know, historic events and um, what was actually going on. Um, but the more opportunity they have to see themselves as historians, as competent historians, the more engaged they become in what they're doing. In town, a herd of civilians gathered around the side of the town hall. Curious, I went to see what all the fuss was about and found a horrifying grieving, which is called a bloody massacre in Boston. 
It depicted a line of redcoats in a battle form firing at unarmed Bostonians. The crowd around the picture began shaking their fists and, whoop, fists and looking, whooping like wild savages. A poem on the engraving described the British troops with their murderous bloody hands grinning about what they had done. I am thoroughly shocked. Again, it, it relates to, to real life um, in the 21st century that there have, um, every time there is an event that happens, there is more than one side. My name's Clement Summer, and um, I live in Not, uh, Lyme, New Hampshire, and I am a farmer. Uh, it doesn't mean that one is right or one is wrong, but they're different, and they're different for different reasons. I think it's not enough for them to just know that there are different opinions, but they need to know why they're different opinions. I'm afraid of, like, changes, so I just want to, like, be farming my land, and I like the king, so I'm not really um, with the patriots. In terms of helping children become more tolerant of other people and open-minded, and I think that in our very global world that that open-mindedness will be essential as they become adults. During my free time when I'm not farming, I go to the tavern and I either talk to the people or buy the newspaper and I read about this and hear about it and when I hear about this I um, go back farming and then I write about it, what I heard. So I'm able to give them uh, um, sort of immediate feedback as opposed to when you have a huge paper and I have you know, 80 papers to give immediate feedback that they can actually use so I can see in their writing improvement. And I have in the, in the diaries, I can see, you know, you know, using the organizational tools, we, using their sources, I can see the improvement and the kids can see themselves. They can read their early ones and say, oh, when um, you were having kids read what, what they'd written, some say, well, I don't want to read that. My early ones were really bad and they looked at, did I write this? And it was only a month ago, but they've sort of blossomed as colonists and I think that's really exciting. The Boston Massacre. Those bloody redbacks declaring war, they fire upon the wealthy and poor. Tension aroused the redcoats there, t'was forced to come out like this bloody massacre, which no one can bear. They overreacted to this minor dispute, and now our strength burns more than ever. It is our time to recruit. And even the, you know, as I said, the, the reticent writers, they all write. One child who has uh, a goal um, in the IP that uh, for four sentences, at one time and rather than four sentences this child has written up to eight pages in response to the news because this child is just so engaged in the character. In terms of um, various um, insurrections and overthrowing of governments around the world, when they see that they also and they um, they need to understand that our country came from a rebellion that was a very bloody and horrible thing at that time too. And they, um, and the, you know, the idea of terrorism was nothing new. Uh, you know, when you think of uh, the, the way the war, the Revolutionary War was waged in the South, that was terrorism. I am kind of prepared for anything if they do come, the Patriots, and burn down Loyalist houses. Each era has its own sort of values and what's important, what's not, and what's acceptable in terms of warfare and what's not. We did a reenactment of the Boston Massacre trial and they were talking about, well, you know, putting people, um, the idea of um, putting people in jail before they came to trial or who, where the trial was located, whether people should be, um, you know, taken away to England for trial as they wanted to do with the Gatsby trial. Um, and they, and one of the um, people in the class brought up, well, you know, what about what's happening at Guantanamo Bay right now? What they found was different was the idea of, of, of freedom as opposed to just attack and that they could understand the idea of you know, violence in the name of freedom, but violence just for the idea of hurting somebody else, that was where it was different, which was nice for them to be able to see and, and analyze it in that way. They hear their own voices and they can see that they're analyzing information and making their own decisions about it. Uh, so if they are able to understand it in the colonial period, they can transfer that, whereas starting to, if you try to make them see it 
in what's happening today, first, it's harder to do that because they're more connected with it and, you know, that their parents have opinions, the newspaper has an opinion, do, 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 but they're able to, but you have to get it at the bottom of it, which is why seeing it um, in a um, completely different setting is a really valuable way to go, I think. As I tell parents at the beginning of the year, I want your student, your children to love history. And I think um, that I'm trying to approach uh, social studies in a way that they will love history. It will be rich. It will be, um, you know, looking at things from a different way. You know, you'll dance, you'll make food, you'll do storytelling, but in, you'll also get a lot of really serious content at the same time. Conflict and violence is an enduring human issue with no apparent end. From their knowledge and experience, these students were able to take what they learned about violence and terrorism during the American Revolution and apply it to the global events immediately surrounding them. They could talk about terrorism and due process with some degree of intelligence in order to make sense of terrifying events. This is the epitome of good social studies teaching and learning, being able to take what you have learned about enduring human issues from one era and apply it to another. This marks a deepening insight into the intrigues of the human story and the beginnings of wisdom about the human societies of the world.